Okay, we have to another integral. We've got the integral from zero to infinity of 700 x to the seven plus 140 x to the six times e to the minus x dx. Okay, I actually adopted this one from a problem on the MIT integration P. Very similar, and what I'm gonna do is we're gonna use the same method on this one where we just notice we have a polynomial here. And we've got a second part, e to the minus x. So this, is in good, so this is really set up for us to use integration by parts using the DI method or tabular integration over here to the right. But because we have kind of a higher degree polynomial, I don't want to make this too tedious. I don't want to have to differentiate like 10 times or 8 times or whatever it is. So let's just put a label on this. I'm going to call this thing p sub 0 for a polynomial, for our first polynomial. And so what I'm going to do is differentiate this to start. So what I want to do is differentiate this eventually all the way down to zero here if we just differentiate multiple times. And then over here, we'll just integrate this part. We'll integrate e to the minus x. And now if we go ahead with this, we integrate e to the minus x. For the first one, we're gonna get minus e minus x. We do it again. The minus sign's gonna come out again and cancel with this, and we're gonna get e minus x. Do it again. And this is just gonna kind of repeat like this all the way here. Then over here to the left, if we differentiate this, this is gonna be alternating signs here. Derivative of p sub zero, I'm just going to call this p sub 1 because it's still going to be a polynomial, but this is just going to be the first derivative of this first expression. And we're going to just need to keep going like this with alternating signs, differentiating this all the way down until we eventually differentiate to 0. What that's going to do is our last row is going to be an integral, but because we have a 0 in here, that's just going to 0 out that integral. So all we really need to do is grab our solution on the diagonals. But what we can do is kind of generalize this. Now notice everything here is gonna have a minus sign. So you're either gonna be getting a minus sign out here on the left, or you're gonna be getting a minus sign on the e to the minus x. So every one of these diagonals is gonna look something like minus p, just a general polynomial, which we don't know what it looks like right now. And then we're gonna have an e minus x, and this is gonna be evaluated from zero to infinity. Now, first evaluating this at infinity, it's gonna be a limit when x approaches infinity. But I'm not going to really worry too much about that because we can just kind of bring the e to the minus x into the denominator. And you can see that because we have an exponential here, this part here is growing much faster than whatever this polynomial is. So regardless which polynomial we end up with, this is always going to be going to zero. So our first part of that is just going to be zero. Then minus times minus is going to give me a plus here. We plug zero in for e to the minus x. e to the zero is just one. So what we end up with is just a polynomial of some kind that we need to evaluate at zero. And now because, like I said, this works the same way for every single one of these diagonals, so in order to get a solution, we just need to kind of sum up all these polynomials at zero. So we just need P0 at zero, plus P1 at zero. And this is gonna go all the way to our last term here. This, this down here at the bottom is gonna be P0, P, P7 at zero. And the reason for that is just kind of looking at the degree on the polynomial you just notice if you differentiate this eight times, then you're actually getting the zero value. So the last term that we need to worry about is gonna be this P7. But now it's not too difficult to see what's happening because if you evaluate, just looking at this first example, P sub zero, if you evaluate this at zero, well, that's clearly going to zero. You take a derivative of this, you're gonna have something like X to the sixth here, X to the fifth here, that's still going to zero. But that's gonna be the case for a while. Even at the fifth derivative, this is still gonna have an X in it. So we're gonna end up with I think six terms that are just zeroed out. And so with these terms all zeroed out, all that we're gonna be left with is evaluating just P sub six at zero, and then this last one, P sub seven at zero. Well now just looking at this P sub six at zero, what's gonna happen is for six derivatives, this first term is still gonna have an X in it. So this term's gonna zero out, we're not worried about that. We just wanna know what's gonna to happen to this 140 X to the sixth. Well for that, what's gonna happen is You'll just notice, like if you start out with x to the sixth and you differentiate, you get six x to the fifth. You'll notice just by differentiating over and over again, what's gonna happen eventually is you get down to six factorial times x, and then doing it one more time, you just get six factorial. So we just have this idea that for x to the n, when n is a positive integer, you differentiate that and eventually at some point, you're gonna have n factorial. So what we've done here for our p sub six at zero, we've just differentiated this down to six factorial. And so for this, we have that value and we can write this in as 140 times six factorial. But then for P sub seven at zero, we can do the same thing on this because when we differentiate that seven times, the same thing's gonna happen and this is gonna become 700 times seven factorial.
But now from here, let's just see if we can get a little simplification on this. Like for seven factorial, I can rewrite that. I can rewrite seven, I can write seven factorial as seven times six factorial. And that's gonna allow me, I have six factorial in common now, so I can factor out six factorial. And we can have here 140. This is gonna become seven times 700. I can write this as a plus 4,900. But then adding this together, this here becomes 5040. And you may not recognize 5040, but 5040 is actually the same thing as seven factorial. So what we have here is actually seven factorial times six factorial. And now at this point, we could probably just leave this, but there's actually kind of another nice simplification. You may recognize this seven factorial times six factorial. What I can do is take six factorial and just kind of expand it out, writing all the terms, and then leave off the one because that's not gonna do anything. But then if I reorder this, just kind of regroup it, write five times two as one piece. Then for six, I'll break that up as three times two. And then here we'll have four times three. Well, five times two is 10. Three times three is nine. Two times four is eight. So if I take this and put this back in for six factorial, what do we have? We've got 10 times nine times eight times seven factorial. Then putting all this together for my final solution for this, we just get 10 factorial. Okay, so there you have it, an integral that I just rigged up so that I could get an answer of 10 factorial. Thanks everyone for watching, have a good day.